Hey, welcome back to the channel. So, after visiting Caesarea, Megiddo, and Nazareth on day one of our tour around Israel, we spent the night in the city of Tiberias. The next morning, we left the hotel and headed about an hour north to the ancient city of Dan. Now, as we approached Dan, we could begin to see the snow-capped Mount Hermon, the highest elevation in Israel. Seriously, this entire area is just so breathtaking with its freshwater streams and greenery. But despite the absolute beauty here, this is also the site of extreme ugliness in Israel's past. If there was ever a picture of what lack of faith in God and total disobedience looks like, it is Dan. Now, before I dig into the sites of Dan, we need to review some Bible history in order to get a greater picture of this site. I will try to be brief. But stay tuned to the end of this video and I will share what lessons we can learn from the tribe of Dan. Named after the fifth son of Jacob, the tribe of Dan was originally given land along the Mediterranean Sea around Joppa, which is present-day Jaffa, in southern Tel Aviv. We find this in Joshua chapter 19, verses 40 through 46. But they never fully conquered the area, which shows their lack of faith and obedience to God. Prior to entering the land... Moses addressed the nation of Israel, and in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 2, it says, And when the Lord your God has delivered them, talking about the inhabitants of the land, over to you, and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally, make no treaty with them, show them no mercy. And further down in verses 17 and 18, you may say to yourselves, These nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and all of Egypt. And in verse 21, Do not be terrified by them, for the Lord your God, who is among you, is a great and awesome God. Now, fast forward to Judges chapter 18, and we see that the tribe of Dan did not defeat the Philistines, and due to this disobedience and lack of faith, they chose to spy out the land to find another place to live. Now, if you go back to Judges chapter 17, we're introduced to a guy named Micah, who had created idols to worship and made a Levite named Jonathan his personal priest. So after the tribe of Dan spied out the whole land, they settled on conquering Laish, which is also called Leshem, which is an isolated and peaceful city in the north. On the way to Laish, they visited the house of Micah, took his idols and Jonathan to be their priest. The tribe of Dan easily attacked the people of Laish and killed them and burned down their city. Then Dan rebuilt it and named it after their namesake, Dan. Again, you can read the whole account in Judges chapter 18. In 1966, during the excavations in the area, a thick layer of ash was discovered, indicating the destruction of a late Bronze Age city, confirming the account in Judges 18, verse 27, of Laish being burned down by the tribe of Dan. The city of Dan was founded in a disobedient way. Instead of trusting God and conquering their original assigned area, they chose the easiest path they could find. Then, to make matters worse, they immediately started off worshiping the idols of Micah's house when they settled in the city. Now later on, after King Solomon's death, the kingdom of Israel was split into two, and Jeroboam became the king of the northern kingdom. In 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28-30, through 30, we see, After seeking advice, the king, talking about Jeroboam, made two golden calves. He said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. One he set up in Bethel and the other in Dan. And this thing became a sin and the people came to worship the one at Bethel and went as far as Dan to worship the other. He set up the golden calves to prevent the people from traveling to the temple in Jerusalem to worship, which was in the southern kingdom ruled by Solomon's son Rehoboam. Now let's jump in and look at some of the sites here at Tel Dan Nature Reserve. This is the Dan River, which is one of the three tributaries that are the beginning point of the Jordan River. This whole area of northern Israel is just so unbelievably beautiful. Next, we come to the remains of the temple where the tribe of Dan and basically the whole northern kingdom prostituted itself in worshiping false gods. Here is the altar, which would have been used to perform the animal sacrifices on. And in the background, is another tour group that is seated where Jeroboam's golden calf would have been placed. Directly behind the remains of this ancient temple is the nation of Lebanon. This is the home to Hezbollah, the Lebanese Shiite militia, who is one of the many enemies of Israel today. Next, 
we see the main area of the city. This is the Iron Age city gate that would have been built by the Jews. Around this area was found fragments of an inscribed stone believed to be written by Haziel, king of Aram, called the Tel Dan Stili. It described the battle between the Arameans and King Joram of Israel and King Ahaziah of Judah, who was of the house of David. It is the first reference of King David from any non-Jewish source. The artifact is located in Israel Museum in Jerusalem. The biblical narrative is found in 2 Kings chapter 9 and 2 Chronicles chapter 22. Here is where the king of the city would have sat, and to the right is where the city elders would have sat. This was a common setup in the cities during the Old Testament times. This is an example of what it could have looked like back then. Later on, I was selected to sit here as king while the tour guide described everything we were seeing. But man, based on where we are and the overt sin this city was involved in, I'm not sure being named king was such a great honor. Lastly, this is the Canaanite gate that is dated 1700 BC. This is the oldest archway ever found intact. The popular claim both online and here at the site is that this is the entrance that Abram used in Genesis 14, 14 when pursuing the armies that took his nephew Lot. Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Now, if you're like me and a critical thinker, how could Abram go through a gate from a place called Dan when Dan, Abram's great-grandson, was many, many years away from being born, let alone the tribe of Dan conquering the city of Laish? How do we explain this? Well, many attribute this to being an anachronism, an act of attributing an object to a period to which it does not belong. This explanation opens up more questions that I don't want to try to answer at this time, maybe in a future video. But at the end of the day, it is possible Abram could have entered this city. Now, going back to the tribe of Dan, what can we learn from all of this? Well, Dan's disobedience, their lack of faith of God, their worship of false gods, ended with them being taken into captivity by the Assyrians along with the whole northern kingdom of Israel. When choosing to follow God becomes difficult and challenging, and we decide to take the easier and safer paths, choosing our ways instead of His, it will eventually have disastrous results in our lives. No matter how difficult things may get, we must stay obedient to God and keep trusting Him. He knows what He's doing. And when you are faced with some challenge or task that obeying God makes things harder and more fearful for you, just remember all the times God has come through for you in the past. Psalm 77, 11, and 12. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Well, this concludes my review of one of the top places I visited in all of Israel. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now up next, we are going to jump right back into the New Testament to a biblically confirmed spot we know Jesus visited in Matthew chapter 16 when we visit Caesarea Philippi. But until next time, thank you for watching and God bless.